Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Welcome to the ADK Rock and Metal channel. And what we have for you losing metalhead bastards at home today is a band called Rive. And the song is called In Filth. Uh, we, we know this band, sort of. Kind of. Yeah. yeah oh, great band. This is the... Um... This is a, a London Hertfordshire band that formed in 2023 this year. Yeah. Atmospheric Deathcore. Simon Something Tom, like that, yeah. I think he's from Hitchin, isn't he? he Great is. band. We interviewed them. Yeah, let's go for it. We're going to check it out. It's a visualizer because they haven't got an official video. It's called an official visualizer. You right. guys know how much I fucking hate visualizers, but we're going to. I won't hold that against the band, but we're going to judge it. I'm going to judge it on the music. So, uh, yeah, let's go check out today's video.
Okay. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Ryan. What the fuck was that? Uh, do you know what? I'm throwing it to Kirk first on this one. Over to you, mate. Okay. So I already know we've interviewed this band on this channel, Sebastian, the main songwriter, good composer, very intelligent person as well. And yeah, good musician. When I heard this, you know, this is the first time I've heard this song because this is a band that we've only seen live and they have minimal studio recordings, don't they? This is actually the first time I've heard them as a studio recording. To me, that sounded like a frustrated version of post metal using deathcore dynamics. And that does not make for a good mix, unfortunately. That song sounded a bit directionless to me. When you break it down, though, there was some real talent in there. Simon, the vocals. So Simon originally was a drummer. So he's learning the trade, how to be a vocalist and how to impose yourself and your personality on an extreme metal song. I think he does a great job in that. I'm surprised, though, by Sebastian, by his composition here, because I think those guitars probably needed to be a lot sharper. You needed to hear more double jointed rhythms more squirming distortion through the amps. I didn't really hear that. The drummer uh, I've interviewed as well, he's from Blackpool, so most of the band are from the south of England, and he's from Blackpool. Those blast beats didn't, didn't fit the song for me, and it's another occasion where I listen to a song, I just think, are blast beats actually relevant anymore? You know, they were a novelty in 1989 when you listen to that Morbid Angel debut album, you just think, what is this? Or Napalm Death. When I hear Blast Beats now, in 2023, I just think they're almost redundant. It's like an arms race that should not be going on. What do the Blast Beats offer to music like that? You can just hear the kick drum and the cymbal. You can't even hear the snare in that. So to me, I think we do need to have an honest discussion about how relevant are Blast Beats in extreme metal because if we're just going to continue to just bow down to them and say, oh, this music's so heavy, it's got blast beats in and it's extreme and listen to the dynamics, you know, this is anti-music. If we're going to be impressed by that, almost 30 years after the birth of the blast beat, then we need to, we need to, be, we need to be looking at this from another angle. They did not fit that music. Atmospheric-wise, though, I've got to say, I think they really were onto something. Even though you've got these blast beats and these monstrous down-tuned guitars, you did have some really interesting, panic-inducing guitar moments, and I, I think they probably did use synthesizers in there as well. So there was a lot of interesting ingredients in there. Unfortunately, I don't think there was much direction to this song, and it felt like a saunter from point A me and you don't really know what's happened in yeah. between that journey from point a to point b so um i would need to listen to that four or five more times to make sense of it on first listen a strange like post deathcore type style of music doesn't really do anything for me i really need to go back to it and study it unfortunately uh what about yourself andy what do you reckon of it um I'm going to be a little bit more positive, I think, than Kirk, um, if I'm honest. When you when you said that those two styles or your description sort of doesn't sort of work, Kirk, do you think they're perhaps just trying to be something a little bit different? Because, I mean, the obvious comparison for me, not being a, you know, particularly sort of into this genre, was uh, Lorna Shaw, you know, the sort of music yeah. and the vocal delivery, which, which I thought was excellent. He, he had a number of different styles, uh, you know, can't be easy to do. You know, so I, I I quite enjoyed the song, but like you, I think I probably appreciate it a little bit more with a few more few more listens. Um, I agree with you about the guitars. Could have been a bit more fuller in the mix and a bit more you know a bit more crunch. It's very bass driven. You know, you can, you can hear the bass you know for the majority of the song. Um, and when you said it was sort of directionless, does that equal my comment about not you know it didn't have a non it didn't have a standard sort of a song structure. You know, no. it, it was a little bit. Yeah wasn't the verse chorus verse chorus outro kind of affair it was very sort of different from what we often hear i mean i remember these guys from metal to the masses uh when that had been early this year sort of spring summer of, of, of april uh, i think yeah yeah not sure if they progressed through the first round I, I personally think i only saw them once but i don't remember it being quite as sort of polished and professional as this i mean obviously it's hard to replicate what we've just heard sort of on the, on on the live 
on the live stage, but I, I thought that was a decent track. I mean, interesting band. I, I think I'll be checking them out further. Certainly listen to this song again. Um, I'm just sort of following on for your comment about Blast Beats. It did, you know, you said about Morbid Angel, that first album. I remember hearing Chapel of Ghouls on a, on a sampler CD and thinking, wow, that this is sort of, this is cool sort of satanic related death metal. But what's that drum blast beat right in the middle of the track? I mean, that, that was new to me as well. But I think it still has a place in this type of music and, and, and in general. And I thought that was a really decent track. The visualizer, Dave, I know you, you don't like it. It'll do to promote this song. It certainly suited the intro. I'm not sure if it suited sort of the bulk of the song, but yeah, decent effort from this from this band. I'll certainly be sort of checking them out further. Okay, uh, so I'll wrap this one up. So just as we finished on the visualizer, I, I don't mind if you're going to do a visualizer, do a visualizer that just does change or do something, just not the same image that just kind of does a very, that does basically a five second loop. That's what was going on there. I think a visualizer can be more than that if you're going to do it. You can do a slight variation. We've seen that with Sleep Token did several visualizers where it was moving around things. It was a bit more interesting, so just to keep your attention. Uh, from a positive, though, from that one, I wasn't bothering looking at the screen. I was just listening to the music. So I, I don't know what the official genre here is, but I'm going to call it progressive deathcore. Uh, and that's a genre for me that shouldn't exist. I uh, It doesn't work for me. Saying that, without knowing really that genre very well, these guys sound like they're a very good example of it, uh, and they do it very well. So I can't take away anything from them because they're doing what they're choose their 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 chosen genre. They're delivering it really, really well. There, I feel that this song is a song that you had to have headphones on, and it's been mixed with the idea that you're you have no background noise and you've got that enclosed and clamped to the side of your head. And you're immense you're immersed in it we're listening to it on little speakers or studio speakers you're not getting that same experience you're getting you're getting a bounce back off the room you're getting tinniness i don't think you can get the full experience of what that was and i was what i was almost kind of thinking i'll grab the cans put them on that will give me that true immense experience they're trying to portray in that song um yeah the journey of the track it wasn't like with a song you kind of expect to go a b c d e it felt like we were going a e c q m t you, you there was no natural order that you could think of but i think again they're trying to do it but for me with death call with that hardcore element and death that goes well together death progressive death goes well together but death core and progressive metal for me doesn't it's too that they're, they're the death the progressive melodies and deaf core are at odds with each other and now that might be what they're aiming to do that's why that genre exists they're trying to be that kind of extreme polar opposites of styles and that's what makes it interesting for me i found it very hard to kind of follow the track etc um the best way i could think and you actually put it about like the elements different elements weren't working for you kirk, kirk and i actually it got me thinking about um Anyone who's watched the series Friends, there is an episode of Thanksgiving episode where Rachel is making a trifle. She's going, I've got a lady of lady fingers, I've got jam, minced beef, peas, carrots, whipped cream, and you're like, she's got the ingredients. All the ingredients on their own work great, but you put it all together in one dish, it's not quite right. And that's how I was feeling about this song. There's just, for me as a listener, it's something I couldn't, listen all the way through and, and get into but i think if you are into progressive death court this is a really good example of it but i think you can't just listen to it on little speakers you've got to clamp it on your headphones you've got to immerse yourself in it and there is something really interesting about it but it's just not my style of thing so i don't want to i i think it's a great track just not my style that's all i'm going to finish on that one hopefully that makes a little bit more sense Anyway, for you, those of you watching at home, if you enjoyed our video, please do like. Yeah, I said enjoyed. See, I said it, Andy. If you enjoyed our video, <laughs> please do like, share and subscribe. And we will see you on another video sometime very soon. Take care.